Cool. Uh, hi, my name is Timur. I'm developer advocate at JetBrains. A um, couple years ago, I gave this talk uh, where I was talking about all the different ways in which you can initialize a variable in C++, of which there are a lot. Except that when I gave this talk, it was before C++20. Now we have C++20, so now we have even more ways to initialize a variable in C++. In particular, we have this thing called, well, it's not actually called anything officially, but I call it direct aggregate initialization because it's... Um, Direct initialization, which is then doing aggregate initialization. What are we talking about? We're talking about aggregates, like for example, an array. Um, so you could always uh, initialize this like this with a uh, list initialization, which is then going to perform aggregate initialization. So list initialization means you have these braces. In C++20, we can now, instead of the braces, use parens, which is direct uh, initialization, which is then going to do aggregate initialization. So that works in C++20. You can do that not only with an array, but also with um, an aggregate class like the struct here with like two member uh, uh, mem data members, like no user declared constructors, so it's an aggregate. You can initialize it with curly, so you can now also initialize it with parens. That works since C++ 20. Why did the committee do this? Well, it solves a few problems. It solves this one problem where you couldn't really perfect forward aggregates before C++ 20. That just wasn't possible. Now you can, for example, you can implement in, in place back. So now you can in place aggregates in C++ 20. That wasn't uh, possible before. The other thing you can now do, which is a little bit more like rare, I would say, is you couldn't really do aggregate initialization inside a macro because if you had inside a macro, if you had curlies and then you had a comma in there, the parser would think that that's then the next macro argument after the comma, and then the parser would just explode. Uh, now you can use parens, so uh, that actually compiles and now works. It's C plus twenty. So great, yeah. We uh, introduced a new feature. We solved two problems, but you know, it's C++, so it's like a hydra, right? Like every time you chop off a head, it grows to a new one. So it's exactly the same here. Um, so turns out uh, when you do um, curlies and when you do parents, it doesn't quite do the same thing. It does aggregate initialization, both of them, but uh, the second one kind of treats its arguments the way well direct initialization does, which is not the same way that list initialization works. So we get a bunch of annoying differences, for example, uh, list initialization does not allow narrowing conversions. Direct initialization does. So this works with parens, but not with curlies. On the other hand, uh, if you have a brace elision, like you have a nested aggregate, so you have an aggregate inside an aggregate, well, if you do uh, curlies, then you get brace elision, so you can basically do the flat, write out the flat uh, uh, initializers, and it's going to recur into the sub-aggregates. With parens, that doesn't work. Um, well, that's very unfortunate. Um, uh, the uh, kind of next one is uh, lifetime extension of references. If you have a reference member, so what list initialization is going to do, if you do aggregate initialization via list initialization, it's going to actually extend uh, the lifetime of the reference if you, if you initialize it with a temporary. Um, so that, that works. But if you do it with parens, then it's not going to do that because direct initialization is not extending the lifetime of a reference. So then you're going to get a dangling reference and you're going to get end behavior and that is going to be very sad. Um, and finally, there is this uh, gem which uh, Pavel Novikov sent me uh, with a comment. Can you tell me what the hell is going on in this code? So basically what's going on here is we have a struct A, which is an aggregate, it has a member, and then another member, which is itself not an aggregate because it has a user-defined constructor. And then we basically initialize this aggregate with a list initialization by just in, you know, initializing both of these uh, members in there. And that works with curlies, that works with parens, uh, what happens if we omit uh, the second initializer? You can do that, right? And it turns out if you do that with curlies, you get a compiler error. Because if you omit the initializer, you get an implicitly initialized aggregate member. And if you do that with curlies, then what it's going to do, it's going to uh, copy initialize that aggregate member as if by copy initialization from an empty braced init list. And copy initialization doesn't work with explicit constructors, so you get a compiler error. If you do the same with parens, you get the same compiler error, which is fine. But what happens if we omit then also the first initializer with the int, um, which doesn't really anything, have anything to do with this explicit uh, thing, right? It's like, it's just an int. If you omit that, okay, great, we get the same error. But with parens, we don't get the same error. What, what, what's going on here? Well, it turns out paren paren actually had a meaning before C20. It actually had a meaning since C03. It had the meaning of value initialization, which is going to do zero initialization, which you know was valid before, and we didn't break that 
Um, so it still has the same meaning as before. So that's going to just zero out the, the struct, and that's, that's fine. So basically, yeah, remember, uh, paren paren doesn't do aggregate transitization, very important. And uh, yeah, thank you, and that's the talk.